Hey everybody, welcome to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com and on behalf of Studio One Expert, I want to welcome you to the Beginner's Guide to Learning PreSonus Studio One Version 3. This video series is intended to help the absolute beginner, whether you're coming from another DAW or if this is the first time you've had any experience with any digital audio workstation. These uh, short videos are going to get you up and running in Studio One and do all the basic functions to get yourself creating music very quickly with no fuss and no muss. Be sure to always check back to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and studioonexpert.com on a frequent basis as I will be adding more and more videos to this series as time goes on. In today's video, we are going to take a look at the browser in the song uh, page here. So right now we're on the start page to get to the song page. So we can pick up where we left off in the last video. You just come up to the top right hand corner and click on the song button. And here is the empty song that we created in the last video. If you have not seen that video, I urge you to go back to the archives and check it out. Um, but this time we're going to take a look at the browser quickly. And over the next several videos, we are going to walk our way through this entire um, edit screen and we'll take a look at all the tools and all the different functions and all the different sections. But for this video, we're going to take a look at the browser. So to get to the browser, you go down to the bottom right hand corner and you click on the browser button and that's going to open up our browser. So let's take a, a, a look-see of what we can do in the browser. So if we start off here at the top and click on this little home button here, it's going to bring us to the home page, if you will, of the browser, where we have instruments, effects, loops, files, the cloud, and the pool, which is the same as the tabs across the top, instruments, effects, loops, files, cloud, and the pool, and then we can also search. Okay, so let's start off on the first tab. Let's, let's start off on the Instruments tab. So in the Instruments tab, this is where all your VST software instruments are going to reside. Um, the ones that come along with PreSonus Studio One, which are right here. You can see all the different ones in the PreSonus uh, folder. We have things like Impact and MyTai and Presence and Sample One, as well as any other third-party type VST instruments you may have on your computer. I have some by Slate Digital, um, the SSD... Um, Sampler. I also have some stuff by Tune Tracks, Easy Drummer, and Easy Keys. Okay, so all your VST software instruments are going to reside under the soft or under the Instruments tab. If we go back to the Home button, we can go over to the Effects tab, and this is where all your plugins are going to reside. Um, you can see that right now they are sorted by vendor, and the way you can sort under the Effects tab here is you can sort by. You can either flatten them, and that will put all of the effects in alphabetical order regardless of the manufacturer. You can go by folder, which is going to put um, put them in an order in different types of effects like delays, distortion, dynamics, EQs. It's going to categorize them that way. Or by vendor, which is the way I choose to look at it because I just am so used to that. But you can sort them any way you want. That's the moral of this lesson. Um, and you can see that by vendor, um, they're all in folders by the company, the vendor. Or by type um, that's going to put in a uh, VST2 instruments, VST3s, all the ones that come to PreSonus, and any of the audio units, which is really more for Logic users if you're an Apple Mac user. Okay, so let's go back over to Vendor, and you can see all the different plugins by manufacturer. Here's the PreSonus folder. Again, you can see all the nice icons to kind of display what the effect is or what the plugin is. Um, this is new to version um, to version three, um, where you have the ability to have a, a little icon of the actual effect. And I'll show you in later videos how to create those even for third-party plugins. Um, and then again, by all the other manufacturers that you may have on your computer. So that's what's in the effects um, folder or tab. Now if we go over to loops, we can either just click on the on this loops here, or we can go back to the home page and go to loops. Either way, it will take us to the same place. Again, these are all the loops that are stored on your system. Now, when you download PreSonus Studio One, depending on the version that you get, and depending on when you're actually watching this video, when you've downloaded your particular uh, copy of Studio One, things may have changed. But there's a ton of loops that come with Studio One, okay? But any of the ones that come with Studio One are going to be um, part as a, a separate download from the program itself. It's going to be in what's called um, as of today, the add-on section uh, in presonus.com under, under your user profile when you go download your software, you'll see a bunch of add-ons that you can download. Um, those are the VST instruments along with a bunch of loops. So any loops that come with Studio One or any other loops that you have on your system from third party will be stored in this folder. And as you can see, they're by style and then by instrument. Um, and then there's all kinds of wave loops that you can use to create a song, which again, we'll do in future videos, okay? If you come over to the files section, okay, now the files are gonna uh, break down the um, 
the locations of uh, files on your on your computer, on your hard drive. So for example, you go under files here, you'll see you have your desktop and then all the things that are on your desktop. And I have a bunch of folders on my desktop. Um, and then any of the, um, any of the different volumes uh, or external disks that you may have under volumes. I have my Macintosh, my hard drive. Um, I have a, a RAID drive for my audio. I have a video drive for my video. Um, and so all your different hard drives and all your different locations on your computer and everything that's attached to it via hard drives, whether it's USB, internal, external, um, are all going to be under the files. Okay. And then under cloud, this is where, this is really cool. Now this is something again, that's unique to studio one, I believe, at least as of the recording of this video, you're going to have things like the pre -Sona shop, which is really cool because in the pre -Sona shop, and you know, when you click on this, if nothing pops up, you'll have to come down here to the bottom and sign in and make sure you're logged into your account. And I am already. So you click sign in. And what's really cool about the pre, the pre -Sona shop is you can buy things like, let's see, uh, sampler instruments. If you wanted to buy some instruments and you can see there's a display down here, um, you can actually purchase stuff from studio one without ever having to leave the program, which is super cool. So if you come under like under E instruments and, um, and click on say finger E base, here's what it is. Here's how much it is. So you can, this happens to be a $39 and 99 cent, um, you know, um, add-on that you can add on to Studio One, which is really, really cool. So going into the pre-sona shop, you can buy a bunch of, um, you know, add-ons and stuff, upgrades. I believe upgrades is to, yeah, upgrading your uh, copy to Studio One. So if you happen to have, say, Studio One Artist and you want to upgrade to Studio One Professional, you can do it again right from the program. You don't need to go to the website. You can do everything within Studio One. Very, very cool. Okay, so that's the pre-sona shop. And there's they're always adding and changing things. Here's a bunch of plugins. Um, that you can purchase. So I, I, I encourage you to go check this out. I mean, here's the channel strip collection, which is fairly new from Studio One, $80. You get like a nice analog channel strip, which is really cool. So that's the pre Sonus shop. Under the pre Sonus exchange, again, when you click on this, you may have to click the sign in button and it'll authorize you. This is like um, an exchange community from the user community where people upload things like effects chains and um, macros for the macro toolbar, which we'll talk about in other videos, grooves and samples, things that you can just, you can share and you can, um, and you can exchange for free. Things again, you could download right into Studio One, whatever having, to, without to leave, having to leave the program. And you can upload um, different types of uh, effects chains, like a vocal effects chain with like a compressor EQ or so on so on and so forth with all the settings you can upload that as a preset and then you can share it with other users which is really cool so that's the pre sonus exchange and again i urge you to take a look through all this is a ton of stuff in here uh here's effects change here's bass effects change rock bass um and you would just click on it and you would just install it okay it tells you what user uploaded it when they uploaded it how big it is really cool so interesting pre sonus exchange very cool very unique to pre sonus studio one and then SoundCloud. Again, if you're logged into your SoundCloud account, if you have it linked up through the start page, as we talked about earlier, over here, you have your, all, your, all the stats and everything you have from SoundCloud, you go back to song. Um, again, all your SoundCloud statistics are gonna be here as well. So as I click on SoundCloud, you can see it says Vision Recording Studios. I can click on my favorites or my following, um, Pure Mix. I mean, there's a whole bunch, you know, th this is all gonna be dependent on your particular SoundCloud account. Here's all my mixes. So all the, all my songs that are on my SoundCloud account are right here. And I can just preview them by clicking on something down here and it'll just, so I can preview my SoundCloud account right in studio one in the browser. Very, very cool. Okay. And then last we have the pool. Now the pool right now it's empty. Let me, um, let me show you what the pool does. So we have an empty song here. We have no audio in here, no files. That's why the pool is empty. But if I go over to my files tab and I go to my, my desktop, let me just grab an MP3 under background music here. I'll just grab anything. It just, what's great about how we use the browser in studio one, everything is just drag and drop, which is very, very cool. Um, so all you do is you just take anything, a plugin, and we'll do this later in other videos, but let's say we want to import a file. We want to take this acoustic sun MP3 and we want to, we want to put it on a track in our edit screen. You don't have to create a track and then import and do anything like that. You just take a left click and just drag it anywhere on the timeline, right at the beginning. And there it goes. It goes, it goes ahead and it imports. Okay. So, uh, we're going over to the pool. 
Okay, so now you see that this acoustic sun file is in the pool. So what the pool does, it's like a storage bin for all the audio files that are in your project, whether you delete them from the edit screen or not. Because you delete them from the edit screen doesn't mean they're going to leave the pool. For example, if I go and uh, let's see, let's um, go back to files and let's add another track here quickly. Okay, so we have two tracks. Let's say one's a guitar track and one's a bass track. And we said, you know what? We're going to delete the guitar track. We don't like it. We can go over to the event, highlight, hit delete. But if we go over to the pool, you'd see that it's still there. So it, it, it catalogs all the audio files that are in your session, whether you have them on the edit screen or not. Okay, so that's a good way to get back into and to try to, uh, you know, relocate something that you might have deleted by mistake or something you deleted and later on wanted to get back to it. You can go to the pool, which is really cool. Whether it's on the edit screen or not, it's going to be in the pool. Okay, so that is kind of the browser uh, but uh, section here. Um, so uh, that's it for this video. <laughs> so thanks for watching. I hope the browser, this video about the browser was helpful. Uh, for more tips, tricks, concepts, and techniques around everything home recording, be sure to head out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and also keep checking back frequently to studio1expert.com as there's going to be more videos around Studio One and everything you want to know about Studio One, the community to go to, is studio1expert.com. You'll learn a ton over there. So until the next video, this has been David with homerecordingmadeeasy.com and I will speak to you all soon. Take care.